Today, I wanna to talk about some of the supposed next generation battery technologies that are floating around in the ether. Because we're all pretty aware by now that the biggest limiting factor on electric vehicles and the entire sustainable energy transition movement is the complication and expense related to lithium ion batteries. And that's got us stuck in a very unfortunate rut where the people of the world are now more than ready to accept electric vehicles, but there's just not nearly enough manufacturing capacity to meet the new demand. Elon Musk has recently said that his new gigafactory in Austin, Texas is basically just a giant money furnace right now because production of the Model Y vehicle can't ramp up fast enough. And Elon identified the introduction of Tesla's new 4680 cell and structural battery pack design as a major contributor to that slow start. So that kind of got us thinking, is there a better way to make batteries? If the materials and the manufacturing of traditional lithium ion cells is causing so many problems, then there must be some new thing in the works that will come up and replace them with a better option, right? So let's take a look. Okay, this one is so outrageous that we've got to address it right off the top. Can we use nuclear diamond batteries to power the sustainable energy transition? This has been popping up a lot lately on the old YouTube feed, and typically we just ignore something that sounds as fantastical as a nuclear diamond powered battery, but upon further investigation, this is actually a real thing. It does exist. But can we power electric cars with radioactive diamonds? Well, the idea here is actually pretty smart. It's basically repurposing nuclear waste into usable energy storage, which is fantastic because while nuclear power is a very excellent source of zero carbon energy, it does produce a radioactive byproduct that is virtually impossible to safely dispose of. Did you know that we literally have no plan for the long-term disposal or elimination of nuclear waste? This is kind of mind-blowing. There is currently over 90,000 metric tons of radioactive waste in the United States alone that are just chilling in temporary storage. And by chilling, we mean the containers holding this material are rapidly degrading and corroding after several decades of just sitting around allowing nuclear waste to leak out. Basically, what happened was the people back in the day had no clue how to deal with this stuff. So their solution was to just stash it in a hole and hope that someone in the future would figure it out. Well, we're in the future and all that same waste is still sitting in the hole where they left it 70 years ago. Someone should probably do something about that. Now, obviously, we can't just turn all of that into batteries. But the suggestion is that we can repurpose some of it as a storage of energy. This is a concept proposed by the University of Bristol, England's Cabot Institute. And they're specifically using spent graphite blocks, which served as neutron moderators inside nuclear reactors. Graphite is just a crystalline form of carbon, and this nuclear graphite waste contains a very important radioactive isotope called carbon-14, which can produce energetic electrons as a byproduct. And that's what we want to harness and use for energy. By superheating carbon in a low pressure environment, we can transform it into gas. And then by cooling and repressuring that gas, we can create diamonds. In this case, a radioactive diamond. Then you place your radioactive diamond inside a battery cell with a semiconductor material like silicon, which collects the stray electrons and allows an electric current to flow out of the cell. This converts radiation into electricity, which sounds dangerous, and that's because it is. So the radioactive diamond cell has to be encased by a layer of non-radioactive diamond to prevent radiation from spilling out. The biggest advantage here is that the carbon will continue to produce electrons for the entire time that it stays radioactive which in this case will be a half-life lasting for thousands of years. So the battery will never die. 
The technical term for this idea is beta voltaic cell, which is not a new idea, but what is new is the refined application using the diamond within a diamond method to make it safe. This technology is currently being pushed by a California startup company called NBD or Nano Diamond Battery. They are pitching this technology as a solution to powering everything from data centers to smartphones to electric cars. Sounds fantastic, right? The only problem is that the only cell design proposed by NDB so far is a tiny little thing about the size of a computer chip and its energy capacity is measured at 100 microwatts. Typically on this channel, we talk about energy as measurements of kilowatts and megawatts, even gigawatts. An average Tesla long range battery pack, for example, is going to be 75 kilowatt hours of energy capacity. And to compare that with the microwatt scale, there are 1 billion microwatts in a kilowatt. So the amount of scaling necessary to get nuclear diamond battery tech from where we are now to where we would need to be to power an electric car is so overwhelmingly steep. To summarize, it's a great idea, it does work, but is nowhere near ready to become the game changer that many would lead you to believe. You've probably noticed there is non-stop coverage about the economy, recessions, and inflation. So learning more about finance and economies is very valuable right now, and our sponsor Blinkist allows you to learn about these topics in a short amount of time. With over 5,000 titles in 27 different categories to choose from that are under 15 minutes, you'll never run out of options. Blinkist has the perfect content to help you be a better, smarter, and more knowledgeable you in 2022, and is the only app that condenses nonfiction books to give you the key insights so you can apply those lessons right away. One of those titles is The AI Economy by Roger Boodle, tackling the most pressing economic questions surrounding the rise of artificial intelligence. How will AI affect our jobs, wages, and work hours? And how how will it impact investments, interest rates, and inequality? These are a few of the topics and is great for anyone who is interested in investing and making the most of this new economy and being prepared for the AI revolution. You can learn a lot in a short amount of time with Blinkist. It's one of my favorite apps and provides exceptional value. I would highly recommend trying it out. And right now, Blinkist has a special offer just for our audience. Click the link in my description to start your free seven day trial with Blinkist and get 25% off the premium membership. Let's switch over to something called the sodium ion battery. This is something that is currently being explored by the Chinese battery manufacturer CATL. They're a Tesla battery supply partner and currently the largest battery producer in the world. The idea behind sodium ion is that they are swapping out the lithium, which is a rare material, for sodium, which is an abundant material. There is about 100 times more sodium available than there is lithium. The process going on inside a battery cell is basically just the movement of lithium ions from one pole of the cell to the other. When you charge a battery, you are pushing lithium ions from the cathode or positive side to the anode or negative side. Then to discharge the battery, same deal, just in reverse. Lithium ions move from the negative to the positive. So, in this application, the lithium ions would simply be swapped out for sodium, and therefore the cells would become cheaper and easier to manufacture. Again, sounds great, right? Well, it's a bit more complicated of a problem than the headline might lead you to believe. Unfortunately, you can't just turn a salt shaker into a battery because you still need all of the other elements that make up a traditional lithium ion cell, such as nickel, cobalt, and manganese. And those are the elements that are actually problematic. So people make a big deal out of lithium. You've probably heard some keyboard warriors spout off about Elon Musk launching a coup against the Bolivian government to steal their lithium mines. And in fairness, Elon didn't do himself any favors by responding to these accusations with a tweet that said, we will coup whoever we want, deal with it. Obviously that was a joke trying to match the absurdity of the claim, 
but some people take things too seriously. Anyway, as Elon has said many times, lithium is actually not that scarce. Elon even owns a large chunk of desert in Nevada that contains enough lithium sand to build every battery he would ever need. The problem with lithium is processing it into a useful material in the form of lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide. Nearly half of all the raw lithium mined worldwide ends up in China, where it is refined into battery material. As much as 80% of all lithium ion batteries are produced in China. So the problem with lithium is not the supply, it's the fact that China holds a near monopoly on lithium refining. That can be fixed, and it's actually being fixed, but it won't happen fast. It takes years to get a lithium processing plant or gigafactory off the ground, and it could take decades and an estimated $175 billion of investment for the US to catch up to China in this regard. Also wanted to give a quick shout out to our amazing Discord community. Here is our question of the week, and this was our favorite answer. And here is the meme of the week winner. Join our Discord community to participate next week through the link in the description below. So swapping out lithium for salt might be a speedier and cheaper solution in the meantime, but that still leaves us with a reliance on other problematic metals, like nickel, for example. We know that the Russian conflict has created an extremely volatile global market for nickel, with record high prices and gigantic swings in price that are wrecking havoc. And in the majority of battery chemistry formulas, nickel requires a small amount of cobalt to act as a stabilizer, because nickel on its own is very reactive. Cobalt has a very similar problem to lithium. It's not actually that scarce, there is plenty of it in North America, just look around on the map for towns in Canada and the US named cobalt. There are several and that's not a coincidence. The problem is that cobalt is incredibly physically toxic for human beings, and exposure to cobalt causes all kinds of health problems from cancer to blindness. And that's why the majority of cobalt mining is being performed by slave labor in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where about half the world's cobalt supply is located, which is just an unfathomably terrible situation. So unlike lithium, there really is no fix to using cobalt as a battery material. It really should just be stopped entirely and done as soon as possible. So what about LFP or lithium iron phosphate? Battery manufacturers have actually been able to eliminate both nickel and cobalt from their cell design entirely by using iron as a cathode material in conjunction with lithium. These cells have a lower energy density than nickel-based cathodes, but they are still good enough for an electric car with modest performance that is still perfectly acceptable. So can we just swap out that lithium for sodium and create a truly sustainable, non-problematic sodium iron phosphate battery recipe? Well, maybe. It's difficult. So while we can swap lithium for sodium, it's not a one-to-one -one substitution. There is a trade-off going to sodium, and that is a loss in energy density. So if we take a high-performance cell design, like a Tesla 2170 cell with nickel, cobalt, and aluminum in the cathode, these have a very high energy density and allow for vehicles like the Model 3 Long Range that will go 334 miles on a single charge. If we exchanged lithium for sodium, it would bring that energy density down to the level currently occupied by LFP batteries. And that same Model 3 with an LFP pack will drop in range to 267 miles. So if we were to swap out the lithium in an LFP chemistry for sodium ions, we would get the same effect, a drop in energy density. And in this case, we would be taking a low performing cell down to an even lower performing cell which would likely result in dropping the Model 3 range to something as low as like 180 miles. And that obviously wouldn't fly with the average consumer. That basically leaves sodium ion as another case of a great idea, 
that just doesn't quite pan out in a real world application that is as challenging as an electric car. Though we should say that even five years ago, people would have said lithium iron phosphate was impossible for electric vehicles because it didn't have enough energy density. And that was true back then, but it's not true anymore because companies like Tesla and BYD over in China have made the necessary advancements in both electric vehicle architecture and battery design to turn the impossible into the possible. The reason Teslas have more range than most other electric cars isn't because they have bigger batteries. In most cases, they actually get more range out of a lower wattage pack. It's because they have a significantly more efficient electronic system. And there's no reason to say that they won't continue to refine and improve that level of efficiency. So while sodium and iron based batteries might not hold their weight as a legitimate alternative right now, there is actually pretty solid reasons to believe that this might be the battery solution of tomorrow. Maybe that tomorrow is five years from now, maybe it's 10, but that's just one very strong example of how we can turn this industry around and have a future with sustainable energy that doesn't require exploiting both the earth and vulnerable human beings to do it. And that's a really nice thought to end on. So let us know what you think in the comments section. Hopefully you learned something new today or at least got to thinking about batteries in a different light. I know I did. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.